one. Here we go, dude. So, Aton, right? Aton. Yeah, yeah. Man. I heard I it. I heard he's a really horrible person. Yeah, I can't stand him. Like, you know, first time I met him, I just he right away it was just. Yeah, not I don't the know. Person to talk to, yeah. He used to be a uh, he used to be a good friend, and now he's just like weirdo. Yeah, I, I hope I'm never gonna be his friend. Yeah, I'm never gonna, gonna try on his. Yeah. <laughs> well, good, good that you know. Um, you're better than him, so you know. Yeah, I think yeah, I got better. So now I'm just. He was actually pissed off. He, he messaged me like, "Hey, this Florent guy, dude. Like, I hate him." <laughs> <laughs> um, now, nah, but jokes aside, dude. Welcome to the stream, dude. Thanks How's for having going, me. How's good, it going? good. Thanks. A bit late, but it's okay. Uh, for those who who really think that we hate Aton, we obviously don't. We love you. No, Aton. we don't. Yeah, I love him. I love everything about him. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, dude. Um, I was following your work for a while already. I'm actually let me put it up because it's right here, and it's pretty darn good. How how long you've been doing this? How long you've been working in the industry? Industry like about nine years something mm -hmm. like that but before that like i've been working mainly as a matte painter for about eight years something right. like that and i just made the switch like uh, half one and a uh, half year ago see that explains a lot that makes me makes me now feel better about myself because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i always thought I like this guy sort of popped out out of nowhere and he's no, no, no. so good i've um, just been trying to get better at this <laughs> And yeah, actually, I never posted anything matte painting related, which, which is a bit weird because so I wanted to, to change so bad mm -hmm. to go as concept artist. I just focused on that and even the post. So you started like a year ago or how, how long? No, how long no, long? I think. No, I mean, uh, matte paintings you've done for like eight years, right? Yeah. But you like when when was the actual switch where you decided, you know what? Like I want to try a different industry and and go into uh, into painting and uh, concept art. Like for real, I think it's when I arrived in uh, in Montreal, like 2013, something like that. I think that's where I kind of clicked. I wanted to switch, and I think it's also because it's gonna sound cliche, but because of the Last of Us, man. <laughs> Just, I played the game, saw the art books, saw what you guys were doing, and it was like something that really spoke to me. You know, the style, the piece of photo, painting, and 3D. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, from that point, I just tried to get better. Yeah, The Last of Us was one of a kind project, dude. I yes. I, I hold it really dear to my heart. Uh, yeah. I honestly do. I actually met with uh, Neil recently, Neil Druckmann. Oh, uh, yeah. We went for lunch, and, you know, we talked about, you know, good, good old times working on that project, you know. Uh, I hope to have Neil sometime uh, busy, on, the, yeah. on the on the stream. Uh, he's totally down, but it's just way too busy right now to even, yeah, imagine, to even yeah. you know uh, think about it. So uh, I think we're just gonna shelve it, and perhaps uh, when the game is out, the the Last of Us Two, I'll just you know yeah. remind myself and see if we can make it happen. That'll be fun. Um, anyways, so. Let me let me start with that man. Like let's uh, let's let's talk about um, and I'm sure we will find like a good topic somewhere along the way. But I like to I like to be sure that you know my guests my guests are well introduced. So uh, I want to start maybe with you know what got you to actually do what you do and like go to go to into that industry. You know matte painting I guess uh, in the in the very beginning, but. Um, were you were you having like an artistic background? Was was it like family related? Maybe you had someone in the family that was good, or you, you just like always yeah. were clinging to it? Yeah, nothing like related with the family. They're all doing like completely different stuff, so mm -hmm. it didn't start from that. I guess like like everyone, I love like movies, video games, and stuff like that. And I always imagine myself working in in that field. Yeah. So I finished high school. I tried to do. Like, I think it was like uh, something like a school for programming. I just left after three weeks because mm -hmm. it was just not for me. And uh, I joined uh, like the Beaux Arts in France for a year when you just draw, you paint, and uh, stuff like that for a year. So I did that. And after, yeah, I joined like a school where opening was opening in my uh, 
in my uh, my area back in France. So I joined a, a school. It was a school about 3D animation, compositing, everything. So it kind of like, was the first time I was like, opening Photoshop, 3D, doing everything. So I did everything from, yeah, drawing Photoshop, 3D animation, compositing. How many years, uh, how many years ago was that? Like. Uh, I think it was in 2005 for okay. three years. It was a three years uh, degree. Mm. So you started 2005 yeah. going to that school. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, and it was doing like all kind of different stuff. So it was more like figuring out like what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, at the end of the school, I wanted to do my painting. So I just went in that field and uh, got lucky to to went to good companies from the start, kind of. Like, so that was, a, that was a chance. Right. So like that, just straight from the school, you started working with, uh, with peeps? With uh, companies? Yeah, I did like, uh, I actually moved like for a year in uh, Montreal before. I mm -hmm. just worked a year in a company uh, over there. And uh, after that, I moved back to London for about two and a half years, and I started to work on a really big project because at NPC, and I think I had, the first one was uh, The Last Harry Potter, so that right. makes me kind of old if I did. And uh, yeah, from that, it was uh, yeah pretty cool. Just so, awesome, dude. You, 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 must been, uh, you must have been killing it to get that, you know, get your foot in the door that early. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that's the key, yeah. Because uh, that would, that would be... I guess around 2008 then uh when when you started working with uh in the industry yeah um that so was a smaller project at the beginning mm -hmm. but like pretty fast i got like the chance to work on a big movies big titles so that was pretty good right so did did you learn everything like directly from the school or did you also uh ended up you know Cause like I remember that that you know you you went to the school pretty much when I was like entering the workforce. Um, yeah, I remember funny, watching your work. Man. Funny, <laughs> funny, funny the way I'm saying it, workforce. <laughs> um, so yeah. And you know I like I did not have like I I didn't know about any schools in where I where I where I lived uh, that would prepare me to work in the industry. Yeah. So that was kind of like. I always, you know, I thought about going to like graphics, you know, programming. Uh, there was, there was like, um, there was a degree in like graphics programming or something okay. like that. And I, I thought that's, that's what it would be. But then I started looking at uh, what actually you, you, you learn. I was like, what the fuck? Like, that makes no sense. Uh, like, it's not going to help me in, in, in making what I need to make to, to work in the industry. So I kind of relied on forums, on you know, Cjun yeah. forum, and yeah, was, exactly. yeah. there was this Polish forum, Max3D.pl, uh, where I met like a lot of people that I that I know, you know, you know, you know today, you know, like I know yeah. some of the people mm -hmm. from that time. Um, I had few sort of like semi mentors, let's put it this way, that would always reply to my posts, and they were already working professionals. Yeah. Um, that's the best yeah yeah it was different times like that was prior to social media um, yeah i remember yeah exactly so that must have been like a good school with like really good teachers that prepared you well um i guess i guess the vfx schools in europe are not that bad at all i think Cause yeah because there was yeah. like more vfx oriented i guess right yeah exactly i think mm. it just gave me like a good introduction to like to the to the industry and everything that was wrong you know, animation, compositing, 3D, lighting, matte painting. And it, so I, I just had to pick, you know, along the way. Yeah. And that's that's what happened. Did you, when you were learning there, they focus you more on 3D or more in, in like painting no, I can, in general? No, I cannot choose along the way oh, where okay. I wanted to go on what I wanted. Because like I completely almost didn't do any animation at one point. Mm -hmm. I just like it's not for me because I'm not good at it and I'm not sure I want to do that. Right. And I, yeah, I just try to find my way between yeah, 3D, Photoshop. I think it was the the two two main stuff that was interesting me the most. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But, uh, but I guess I learned like a lot on the side as well. And right. I think, yeah. You get and inspired by the by the stuff that's being posted online, I, I guess, you know, like. It's yeah, also, yeah, I remember Sijin. I was, I was posting on Sijin sometime. Oh, some cool. Stuff. Yeah. When did you start on, posting there? Uh, I think it was during school. Uh, so between that time, 2005 and 2008. Yeah, I think I stopped posting about 2005, six. I think. Okay. As, far as I remember, I started like around 2003. I remember that was that was when I posted for the first time. I think uh, that was like the very last days uh, where where Craig Mullins was still posting on CG. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. And then I think he stopped like somewhere early 2004. I think that's like the the last time I saw him posting any uh, anything over there. But then you had dudes like, you know, David Levy and all yeah, exactly. the French guys posting there all the time. And, you know, Spart was there all the time. Yeah. That was really remember, cool. Yeah. Super, super inspiring. And it was funny because I, I mentioned this before. Um, you know, when I met David uh, live, David Levy live, like, you know, and uh, in, uh, I think it was like I was meeting with Ash actually for the first time. And David Levy was there because they were, they were doing like a dinner after... Um, uh prometheus i think it was prometheus Pr uh, no it was ender's ender's game premiere okay uh so you no know, ben proctor was there the production designer and then um you know if, quite a few guys like quite a few people like quite a few real big names and i was like wow like all of the legends you know <laughs> um and then i you know i met david and i said like, dude i love like i love your work and then i started you know saying like i i i, I you know, I saw it on uh, Season, and then I told him, you know, who I was on Season. I was like, "Damn, dude, I remember you too." <laughs> it's like, it's like was funny. it Captain Captain of Views? Um, no, it was Tiger Thirteen Fifteen. Oh, okay. I believe it was so weird. I don't know why I picked up picked up. Because uh, it's a Season cool name, name like that. Tiger and a number. I think that sounds cool. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember why I picked up that name. It was like weird. It was it was a weird name. I, I changed it to Captain Obvious later, and then like figured out, you know what? I don't need to have like a weird name attached to me. It'll just 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 be myself. You know? <laughs> uh, but I guess it was the era where everyone was having weird names attached, you know, because it was cool. Yeah. It was like early yeah. internet me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you you started with uh, so from school you went straight to MPC in London. Uh, no, no, I did a. Uh... A small company in, uh, in Montreal first. Mm -hmm. I was like, I had my share of, of bad project over there. So mm -hmm. I did pretty, pretty bad stuff. But it was yeah, like a cool experience to move right away from France to Canada. Mm -hmm. And it was something like, yeah, pretty cool to experience so soon after school. And uh, yeah, after that, I got uh, hired in, uh, at MPC London and I moved uh, over there. So you've been moving around like freaking. Yeah, they past the ocean they, and back and forth. Yeah, back and forth because I'm back in Montreal since five, like it's been five years now. Yeah, was it difficult to move for you, or, or did you, you just didn't care? Uh, I just because I didn't stay that long. First time in Montreal, I stayed like ten months. After that, yeah. London, two and a half years or something. So it was short. Now I guess it's, it might be more difficult just because I've been there for five years. Right, and, and you kind of get like your habits over there. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also want to move because it's like it's exciting to to change place. Yeah, I I, I get you. You know, I think I think it is. I, I get. Um, I don't know if you have kids. I I don't think I don't think you have kids, right? No. Um, yeah. Once you once you have family, uh, yeah. Once you have kids, like moving becomes uh, a real issue because you know then it's not just you and your. Um, like, oh, I want to move there, you know, like you have to start thinking about yeah. the others, like, hey, like, do they want to move? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly, yeah, it's quite difficult, like, especially if you move across the ocean, but yeah, and you kind of, if it's just for a project, my, yeah, 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 with my girlfriend, we kind of try, to, you know, we try to talk, like, see, uh, where do you want to, do you want to move? I would really want to move, do we move next month? You know, it just, you have to, yeah, right. it's not like yeah, I'm all alone and I can uh, just say, yeah. <laughs> next week and uh, i'm gonna be there yeah it's like once you have someone who who's like close to you and yeah, yeah it's becoming yeah, this decision is tougher uh, just to to make yeah it's pretty crazy uh well i mean like if you're just moving for a couple of months i guess 
uh, it's not that yeah. bad because you, 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 yeah. your consideration is like, you know, I, I'm going to move there and, and go back, you know? Yeah. There's always like that, that, that line of thinking. Um, but then if something you move can happen. To, yeah, to stay there for a year or two, that's not the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you you moved so you moved there and then you moved back and then you moved back again. Yeah, again. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna move back again. So how many how many know. times you moved across the ocean in like past five years? Just uh, one, two, three, just three. So yeah. that's that's fine. <laughs> one in Montreal, back in London, and back in Montreal. I should probably shut up because I moved like three or four times across the ocean too. So. <laughs> Yeah, I literally moved uh, to Naughty Dog and moved back to Poland for a year and then moved back here. I didn't know you moved back between uh, Naughty Dog and uh, now, I mean, uh, after Naughty Dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And after after I left Naughty Dog, I've been moving a couple of times, too. It's actually, you know, makes me tired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. There's something about, I don't know, maybe I'm like an unrested soul because of that, you know. Anytime I move to a new place... It's like I was almost almost already thinking like where should I move next? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's almost becoming a habit. It's crazy. Uh, so where are you up to now? Like so, okay. Let me let me ask you this instead. So you switched eventually from matte painting uh, to concept art, and it was I, I, you know you mentioned about The Last of Us. Yeah, you know video games. I'm pretty sure there's like inspirations along the side do you think it was also a business decision for you in terms of like hmm, maybe maybe this will allow me to have more stable job or something like how, what was your perception of of vfx industry because like we hear a lot about you know what the vfx industry is you know what is yeah. we have there's a ton of bad stories you know on you know how it is to work in the vfx i stopped following that in past few years i think there's just like no need for me to yeah. to really pay attention to this yeah. anymore, because yeah. I think I've I, I I've learned enough and I spoke to enough people to know sort of like what was going on. I would be just curious to know if if it changed for better or worse. But I I would I would be curious, you know, what were your experiences um, when when you were working in that industry and you know whether it was like long hours or, or good, you know, I is this really think, studio dependent or, or it's all across I, the board? Yeah, I think my painting is a bit like uh, protected in terms of hours. I think so. And maybe because I was not doing that much, but it's like we are in, not compositing at the end of the chain, you know, like we're gonna figure out everything at the end. So it's kind of fine. But what makes me wanted to move it just I got bored in my painting it was just getting boring the work so mm -hmm. I just wanted yeah, to find kind of having that alternative of keep doing what I wanted to do like my painting because I really love you know working with photos and do what we do uh, in my painting but have more fun because I was really getting like bored and just not enjoying it anymore right and I think what happened that's why the main thing when I, when I wanted to move to change the, my uh, my career. So was a, a and I've I've heard this a few times already too, uh, where everyone says like, "Oh, matte painting is like you're painting awesome landscapes," but it's not no. really that, right? <laughs> no, sometimes you're painting on shitty three D, so it's just <laughs> it's just the problem. So, yeah, sometimes it just needed like. We have that term where we are like patch artists and you're just patching over 3D. Mm. And it just became like... That's a good the, expression, patch artist. Yeah, patch artist. <laughs> yeah. The name of not Matt Painter, patch artist. And it was so much about that. Sometimes you have like cool projects where mm -hmm. you, you manage to do my painting. Like I work on Game of Thrones and it was like much fun on this one because I think that the time frame was shorter than a movie. So you just have the chance to do more different stuff and right. on, a, on a shorter time. Gotcha. Yeah, once you get to like actually do the landscape, it's the fun part. But yeah, yeah. I, I can't remember who was uh, who I was talking with. Maybe it was uh, Levy Petterfee mm -hmm. who was telling me like, dude, matte painting is not really what you think. And uh, yeah. it's really more of like just literally looking at the, the, the plate from the film and what can we fix to make people believe it's real, you know? Yeah. When yeah. it's like a trash can or you know, patching like a street that had some lamp composited in. Yeah. yeah. 
It's not shoot about that. about the epic shot, yeah. Yeah. Epic shot are more like the one percent you're gonna get, two percent, but the rest is not that much fun. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine why. Why would you want to switch? <laughs> and you can see, like you know, uh, I think Dylan Corey and Nick Dussault and all of that. They move from art painting, and now they're just, I think, art director to concept art, right? So yeah, Dylan, Dylan went from matte painting to, from, if I if I remember it correctly, you know, he would st he would still mat do matte paintings while doing um, while doing work in concepts but i think like people like dylan and and uh steve messing you know like those yeah. really really freaking amazing guys they're like they're a little different than most of what matte painters are you know i think yeah. they're yeah. on a completely yeah. different level yeah ex yeah, yeah both absolutely. of them from what i know and just knowing what what kind of work they they've done uh they they basically could build the, the entire shot themselves yeah you know? it's true yeah so when you can do that then you're not hiring a vfx company to work on shots you're hiring yeah hiring people you're the guy, yeah yeah so they they did like a ton of work like dylan dylan's done like a ton of work for everything and uh, steve messing is the same it's the, it's the same um both of them are not i know they're in the union and uh dylan now is uh production designing and um and Steve Messing is, you know, he's doing illustration, but he, he's also doing like the VFX design and supervising. So it's like a, a slash, I guess, VFX head guy and illustrator. Um, I'll, be, I'll be curious to know actually more, but they're so freaking busy. Yeah, uh, I'm, can I'm imagine. Trying, yeah, I've been trying to get uh, Steve um, out of the woodworks. <laughs> It's just so busy, um, you know, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, like all, most of the other guys like moved from, there's quite a bunch of guys I know that were in matte painting and then they moved, um, moved to a uh, concept, uh, specifically because of that. So that makes a yeah. lot of sense. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a, yeah, it's a good move to do, I think. Just if you want to keep what you think matte painting is and just like keep walking, I think it's a it's a good uh, yeah good switch. Yeah, it's it's. I'll be intrigued. You know. Uh, how, yeah, that, that's that's that's. I guess that's like a main decision that, yeah. that people make. But as, yeah, I still had like a lot of fun on on project. I'm not saying like it's, it's really bad, but it just how. It is now. It's more doing, you know, boring stuff than doing mm. epic landscape and uh, stuff like that. So that's that's it's, the thing. It's more yeah. technical now too, right? Like you actually have to know 3D and you know prediction mapping, all that kind of stuff. Because otherwise, yeah. you're like yeah, in companies like sometimes it's separated, like the 3D and the matte painting. So I happen sometimes to do not any 3D, just getting the 3D from someone. And starting to do the matte painting mm -hmm. depend on the company and the kind of profile you have. But sometimes it's yeah. Most of the time, at least here in Montreal, it's separated the the two fields like three D technical and matte painting. Yeah, that, that's that's really interesting because I I thought it's moving more in the technical direction, but I guess it just depends on the project and the company. Yeah. yeah. But I guess the expectation would still be kind of want to learn three D yeah. and all those aspects, right? Yeah. I would say now uh, I would like to do, I would prefer to do both. Mm. Like to have like a sense of control on, on everything that I do. So if I fuck up something, I'm the only one responsible for that. And I just uh, can fix it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, learning tools, obviously. I, I, we've been we've been talking about this topic. I've been talking about tools topic so many times. I, I guess it's becoming a, almost a boring, <laughs> boring topic. But I have a question again. Um, so, because I I remember back in uh, 2008, I think end of 2008, maybe like early 2009. I, I picked up matte, matte painting uh, myself because I wanted to learn the craft. You know, I was, I was 
I remember seeing like cinematics from Blizzard nice. back then. It's like super inspiring stuff. Uh, it was a cinematic from. Uh, gosh, what was the cinematic from? Did, did, did you work on that show film called The Unforgoloom as well? Uh, which, which show? The Unforgoloom. Like a lot oh, of yeah, the Ring. The Hunter so, Gollum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, because I started like trying to do matte paintings and mm. then like some it guy from there was this it guy i can't remember his name fuck um but he was i don't know if it was it it was like a programmer or something from uh from frame store uh, from okay. the, you know so he he wanted to make his own short film or well, it was like semi short it was actually pretty long <laughs> it was like 49 minutes um so they want to do matte paintings and you know i started doing some some, some stuff uh with them for that project it was like a free project for you know everyone was just involved on their own dime it was fun i learned a lot you know because I, I treated it as a, almost like a boot camp to learn stuff um and then i remember uh the cinematic for wrath of the lich king yeah, came out. yeah. that was like oh my god like how the fuck they did that you know so I, I i picked up that one i wanted to like replicate something similar that was really fun i remember when i did like once i wrapped all of that work i got a call from blizzard <laughs> it was like they were oh like, yeah yeah they wanted they were they were thinking about hiring me on that painting position for the cinematics team but they ended up i think getting someone who was local because it was just so much easier they wanted someone like really quick and you know getting a visa to move to us is not yeah. it's not a quick thing it takes months so we ended up uh not doing that but you know six or seven months later i got a call from naughty dog so i'm, I'm not complaining yeah, which but, yeah, pretty good alternative <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but 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 uh one thing i've learned and I, i'm curious to, to to hear uh about your um your experience with with matte painting and the transition is that the matte painting taught me so much about the photorealism and paying attention oh, to color. Yeah, man. Yeah. Not only color, but like what kind of textures you use, like how you stitch them together, where do you pay attention to details. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, yeah, man, stuff. a lot. Yeah. And I, 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 fe I felt like if I haven't learned that, I would probably be, you know, um, I'll, I'll not be where I am right now, I think, you know, in terms of the, the, the quality of work. What do you think? Uh, do you, I'm, I'm pretty sure it helped you, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious on like on what level you felt it helped you I the think, most. I think I might not have realized, you know, how much it maybe helped me till like I started to do concept and use photos in my work, like how I pick them, how I blend them together, how I try to, to you know, to look for the sharpness, the blurriness of everything. The colors, how to blend them. Yeah, I think it was like the best, the best to learn how to, to deal with photos. Yeah. Because we you deal with photo with every shot you're gonna do, so you just have to be careful how you're gonna work with them and uh, blend them together. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it, it teaches you how to uh, pay attention to those little details. You know. Yeah. It's like literally in. As you said, you're like you're pretty much a patch master <laughs> when you're doing a matte painting, um, and then when you get to, you know, uh, uh, there was a period of time, and I, it's 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 gone much better now. But it, there used to be a period of time um, when you would go on, I guess, CG Hub or DeviantArt, and early in the uh, Art Station days, where you would see like badly photobashed work, you know. Yeah, yeah, and people just choosing like random photos, stitching them together in like random ways. Um, yeah, and but I'm not obsessed to blend everything, so you don't really see it's yeah, from a photo. Yeah, no one would do that. Photo, it's from a photo. <laughs> and I just yeah, sometimes I just spend like you know hours just everything is blend. Yeah, you can see like, putting that extra time come from, to, yeah to put come it from together. different photo and. Would you say like you, like how much time you think you you would spend on actually blending and and making sure that the stuff is uh, you know working together rather than um, you know just bashing bashing stuff together? 
yeah, I, I take my app test like sometimes quickly, like a photo I test quickly. Yeah, is it good? No, and I just throw it away and I test another one. Okay, I'm just not gonna spend, you know, too much time on trying to integrate like one picture. I'm just gonna try out like different ones, and I integrate along the way. Like I put one, the second one I'm gonna, I'm not gonna keep it for later. To just integrate with everything. I'm just doing it along the way. Yeah. But so you, everything blends. Do you, do you think you spend more time in in you know actually doing paint work on top of it, or it's like fifty fifty? I or, think it's or yeah, it's it's fifty fifty, and depend of the of the image or the the style I I want to have. Like mm -hmm. sometimes I just don't want to paint too much on top of a, of an image, so I'm gonna try to just blend them together, but not add that extra paint at least you know, look on top. Yeah. So, so uh, sometimes, yeah, it's really like doing matte painting in a way. So keeping the, the raw image and adding more on top, on top, but not painting. Yeah. And I think that's like what happens like more in the, like, in the last of us, what we do now. So. Yeah. You've uh, been working on the, on the new one, right? For a while now. Yeah. Yeah. It's been yeah, it's been something like a year or a year and a half with the with the great Shady Safari. <laughs> yeah, what got what what got what got his uh, <laughs> what got you hired? Uh, was it was it the were you convinced by his uh, sexy double chin? <laughs> can I can I, no I cannot like I'm working for him. You can fire me tomorrow. No, he has no <laughs> double chin man, because it's just it's straight and sharp. Don't worry. You can talk. You can talk shit about Chatty. Yeah. If if he if he does something to you, I'll I'll not. I'll stop giving him work. <laughs> I'm joking. Now Chatty's cool. Um, yeah, man. And I think also like when I started back in 2013, it's the time when I discovered a year after uh, one pixel brush, and I wanted to to work for for Chatty, so I kind of aim my my quality of work toward that. Mm -hmm. Just to be able to to get hired by him. Did you reach out to him and say like, look? Yeah, I reach, uh, look actually, at that yeah. <laughs> yeah, I reached out like, the first time to Ethan, who told me that like, you should uh, reach out to Shelly, and I sent like sample of uh, of my painting to Shelly, mm -hmm. just to see what it was uh, look like, if it was good enough, and he sent me an NDA directly and i said oh not yet man i just no no <laughs> not, you know no, 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 no give me some time so i just waited like for i think a year or something till i was like feeling more comfortable with my work i just didn't want it to rush things hmm. yeah you played it smart huh like you just like hey lab just think I can do let me, me, like, let me get better at this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool that's cool yeah shadi's good he's a good eye for for yeah. finding that you know juicy brush strokes everywhere uh it's it's kind of funny because like the way he pick up pick up artists that work with him are very like all you know the, the 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 work you guys do is is different enough but then there is certain quality to it that um that remains sort of very solid and very you know very unified across the board that's really 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 interesting it's the same like you know, uh, I think uh, I, I, I remember I met him uh, when I joined Naughty Dog. He was like, actually, I think he had like his leg broken. He was on the wheelchair. Um, I was like, oh, OK. Um, but yeah, I, I remember I met him then and he was like doing all the painterly work. He would ask me like ton of questions on how I work. And I would always like be really reluctant and reclusive, you know. <laughs> or I would just straight up, I remember, like, uh, I would lock my computer or just straight up, like, merge all the layers. <laughs> <laughs> so they could not just... Uh, uh, I was a dick back then, dude. I was like, I'm not going to share anything. Uh, we all heard stories about <laughs> Dog Massage, right? <laughs> but it changed, dude. It, it yeah. changed. Like, once we, once, once we got into that mode of... Um, working with Bruce and, you know, sitting down and, um, like really brainstorming all of the ideas it's like all became more collaborative, uh, <clears throat> collaborative uh, effort. And we yeah. like started really sharing like different techniques and whatnot. So, 
But Shadi, I remember, like, he would just send me images back then of, like, different artists that he dis- he would discover. And <laughs> and one of those artists was John Sweeney, actually. <laughs> I remember, oh, yeah? I remember <laughs> shitting on his work so hard. <laughs> it's like, dude, this work sucks. Um, yeah, it was pretty pretty average back then. But, you know, he, he picked up the ball real hard. That that dude is... Yeah, yeah. Is <laughs> pretty right now. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's like super intimidating every time you we send something. Like, okay, are they gonna like it? Is it, is it okay? Is it good enough? <laughs> well, the thing, and you know this already. You've worked with Chatty, and you worked with John. Uh, you you know you know this really well that uh, John is the kind of person that he'll give you a genuine feedback. Exactly. And, and you will know exactly what to do. You know, he's like, yeah. he's one of the most honest people I've ever met. Like most kind and honest and straight to point. A little, uh, a little quirky on the on the edges, you know. Likes to <laughs> likes watching movies from the '80s and and almost play them out in real life. Um, <laughs> but I love I love John. He's he's such a such a sweet guy, dude. It's real fun. So yeah, so what? So you you decide just. You just okay. I want to reach out to Shadi. I guess Aton told you to do that. Um, that fucking Aton, like he's everywhere. Yeah, I do everything. He needs hey, what, what's up with that guy, dude? Like, what's up with Aton? I don't know. I don't get that guy. Sometimes he's just like he's trying to help people. Like, what's what's going on with that? Yeah, and he, yeah, he keeps talking to me on Facebook as well, and he's just ah, I have, do I have to answer again? <laughs> he's like, man, I have a question, and I want to help you. It's like, give me a break. <laughs> I don't, I don't need your help. I don't need you. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, how long you've been with the One Pixel Brush then? Like over a year? Uh, now, huh? Yeah, a year, year and a half, something like that. And was it primarily um, The Last of Us for you or some more? Yeah, some uh, like other projects, model project uh, with Shadi and uh, yeah, The Last of Us, mainly The Last of Us for the, the past uh, past year. It's cool, man. Which is actually pretty cool to work on. And we're doing a lot, so that's yeah, I need cooler. To, I need to get Shadi to show me some of the work that you got, you guys have done and break the NDA completely, get fired. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Shadi, so it's, it's, I know it's the boss. He can do whatever he wants. Yeah, even even I cannot look at that stuff. Uh-huh. It's kind of sad. It's kind of it's kind of sad. No, I'll, I'll I should probably go to the office one day and say, like, "Hey guys, can I see some shit?" Yeah, I can see something. Yeah. I'm missing Naughty Dog, dude. I'm actually missing it. Oh, yeah. I've enjoyed I've I've enjoyed working there a lot. I guess just the like the the crew must be you know just amazing, just great guys and great project. And yeah. I don't know, just feel well. Nick, they all feel Nick like is, so friendly and nice. Yeah, Nick is not there anymore, which is kind of bummer. Because Nick was, uh, it was, you know, he was a baby shredded Nick. Uh, you know, baby shredded Nick. It was, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was a good spirit. <laughs> but Aton and Aaron Lemonic and John and Alex and you know all the other all the other folks are are there still. And that's uh, yeah, it was one of a kind of experience. I remember when Marek Ocon was was there too. Like when I was still working there, and Marek came in to work for like a year in the studio. Yeah. That was fun times. You probably, you know, once you, uh, once you're like, on, you know, if if you get, if you get if you get to work with them on site or get to visit, you you know, the guys will probably tell you some stories about the good old the good old Mark. <laughs> oh, I would I will ask. Yeah, sure. yeah, he's uh, um, he's one of <laughs> one of a kind. He has a bigger Polish card than I do. You know, I used to have this. <laughs> Uh, I used to have this Polish card where I could say shit that <laughs> and get away with it. And like, what's up? I'm from Poland, potato. Um, but he was he was even better at it. You know, he would sometimes, oh. <laughs> sometimes say so ob- such an obnoxious shit. It would be so funny. But that's so innocent at the same time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, um, <clears throat> let's jump into some questions. I think I know. Uh, I know it's pretty late for you. I got some work to do, so we uh, we were not gonna go like over an hour. Um, okay. And um, but there was there was a bunch of questions, and uh, I'm pretty sure people would love to hear your opinion. And I found that sometimes the questions take more than the than the talk itself. So 
Um, let's see. Um, I need to make a rule if people ask questions in the chat to write question because people sometimes there's a question <laughs> and it's not marked as question. Uh. Um, yeah, the first one was how did you start working uh, at One Pixel Brush? You kind of answered it already, but uh, yeah. the question, the follow-up question was, any any tips for anyone wanting to follow that path? Guess yeah. Shadi has a street cred, dude. Shad is building that street cred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you have any tips on you know how to get how to get Shadi excited about you or about people's work? I guess like uh, like what happened to me. I tried to do what Ethan was doing in a way. So I guess just trying. Hey, there you to, go, like, guys. Juice, Copy Ethan. Just copy paste his work. Send yeah, I just put my name on some. I just flipped them, put my name. <laughs> Shelly never noticed. So. <laughs> um, but I can say, yeah, getting that juice, you know, just watch tickle Shelly, you know. Yeah, let's maybe so. let's maybe explain to people what the juice is. Like, how would you explain? Because I know already, but I would love to hear your your description oh, of Shelly's yeah. uh, depiction of what the juice is. How can how can we like describe that? How can I do that? I don't know. For me, like the juice, it's like the 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 lighting part for me. It's just trying to do like a sexy lighting, sexy shape. Mm -hmm. For me, that's that's the juice in an image. The shape, the color, the I mean everything. So that's like maybe you have like a better better definition of the juice. I guess Shelly has a. That's the best Shadi one has like the best definition yeah. of juice. You actually can watch. I think he talks about his definition in one of his mm -hmm. like one of his very few free tutorials he made for Gumroad. Um, but just to help you out, like I think, you know, like there is this very certain way of like how you use brush strokes. I'm gonna try to find like a good example here in your portfolio. Um, where it's like how how painterly the brush strokes look like but also they are not just only painterly like this is a good example with the cowboys you know on the on the horses oh, okay. yeah. yeah it's like when you look at the clouds they are sort of like very loose but still they look like super real but they're like super juicy you know it's like yeah. oozing with that brush stroke stuff i think that's what uh, i yeah, know yeah. he responds to that pretty well but like yeah. he will not respond to that if the image itself doesn't have that quality uh, of, of the detail uh, that he's after. You know, actually, you know, for those who wanna who wanna really know what Shaddy's after, he go on his website, he like literally explains what he's after. Yeah. <laughs> like just breaks it down step by step. And also and, what he's not after. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I would say, don't be afraid to uh, to, you know, spam him actually just go and spam his, his mailbox as much as you can and, and write that it's from me um yeah, but other than that email, but yeah so, just send sure. like hey yeah. like i was asked to spam your email but also look at my work um no but but in in uh, in all seriousness yeah if like if you send something to him and i i'm gonna have a conversation with shadi soon anyways on the art cafe uh but uh when you send a work to him it's like you know, make sure, like, look at Florence's work. Like, if it's that good, then you're not going to have problems to get hired by him. You're probably not going to get problems to get hired by anyone at that point. Um, but it's like uh, you have to compare yourself to the quality of the portfolio images that yeah. he already has in his, uh, you know, in his ranks. Because he's obviously going to look for people that are good, Um so yeah, I think I'll, that would would that would answer it. Uh, what do you look for specifically when you're picking out uh, reference pictures? Uh, like I try to get like, if I if I'm gonna you know do a painting with uh, like, I don't know sunlight for example, I'm gonna try to pick a picture that has sunlight. I'm not gonna try to add sunlight on top of something that is in shadow or overcast. I'm gonna try to look for the you know the right lighting, right like get close to the colors as well 
right. as much as possible, and I'm gonna adjust everything. Sometimes you don't find it, and you have to to make it for yourself. But if you can spend some time and try to find like for the almost the right picture, I think it's the best, and especially for the like the, like I would say like don't try to mm -hmm. to make like an image an image with sunlight too overcast. It's just like probably not gonna work. And if you do like an image with sunlight, try to pick you know picture that already have the same like direction, same I don't know, same mood and stuff like that. Just to to help you uh, like to blend everything together the the best way possible. Yeah. Yeah, I look at it very similarly too. Like just trying to find the relevant to the image and make sure you know, the lighting is right, the colors yeah, are yeah. close. Yeah, I prefer to spend an hour like looking for the right reference than just rushing yeah. into uh, grabbing that first one just because it's, I don't know, I like something about it, but it's just not, not going to work. Like whatever I do, it's just going to look fake. Mm -hmm. So I prefer yeah, to spend some time on my uh, looking for reference and picking the right, right image and blend them like together, looking for the sharpness, the weariness of everything. Yeah. How much time you think you spend on like an image? Like let's say one of uh, whether it will be a painting for The Last of Us or one of your you know personal pieces. Like yeah, for The Last of Us, I would say something because it's pretty detailed what we do. Like, yeah, it's yeah, really, yeah. Like polished to the end, so maybe like thirty-three hours, something like that. So a couple of days, like three, three, four days. Yeah, three days. Sometimes yeah, three days, and then yeah, something like three days. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I remember when I did. Sometimes it go like a bit, a bit more, just because you have like feedback and retake. But three yeah. days of yeah, yeah. a final version. I remember some of the paintings we we did for the the first Last of Us. Uh, like some of them were like literally a week and a half or two. You know. Yeah. Like I remember that street painting I did. Um, was like the. You know, like with the abandoned cars. Like one of what was one of the first like really. You know, one of the first paintings that I did that really hit the mark, but we like chiseled uh, chiseled on it for like two weeks, you know, yeah. and trying to yeah. like depict every detail. And Bruce would come over and like, you know, hang on like this little car detail. It's like, are you sure? Like this, you know, we would yeah. discuss like where the rust would be. It's just like mm -hmm. some insane, um, insane little things. But that was like a piece or like a starting piece for. Yeah. You know, okay, define this, the look. Yeah, yeah, defining the look, and then later on, uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, three four days is is uh, where yeah. like really really nice finished piece would land on. Yeah, uh, it's kind of crazy because you know I've been working in film uh, for past couple of years, and uh, and I miss that. <laughs> I miss the ability to sort of like sit down and and just, and, uh, and yeah, just spend like a couple, you know, a little bit of time. Mm. I guess. Um, I would say um, Ghost in the Shell was like the only project. Ghost in the Shell, and to to a degree, um, when I work with Owen Patterson, um, who I worked with on the Captain America uh, and Gods of Egypt before, and then some other project uh, for Legendary Pictures uh, recently. Um, working with him is more similar to what I would be what I was doing at Naughty Dog where I had actually more time uh, okay. to get something more polished but also like with the expectation it's going to look awesome you know like we can actually spend time to develop all the details in that specific keyframe um, it's pretty visible actually when you look at um, uh, like the Captain America work that I've done that it was just like you know I, I had more time but then there's like films where you just literally have to thought about shit like in matter of hours and send like three four images a day and it's just like what's the point <laughs> yeah you know it's like really really wearing you down uh because like you cannot focus on on getting getting the right stuff and it's really annoying but that's what i that's one of the things i also miss from from you know games uh video games it's just the fact that you have a little more a little more time usually on working on pieces. Actually, someone asked like if it's pretty common, but also a question to the chat. Uh, but we can answer that too. Like if it's pretty common to photo bash uh, in the in, like in in your work, yeah. it's pretty common, isn't it? It's pretty much yeah. mandatory at this point. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Just, I guess 3D and photo bash now. It just yeah. 
if you're not doing like that, it. then you're yeah, you're you're screwed. I, yeah, and mainly like for yeah projects like that, like Last of Us, or you know, as you said, like working on movies. If you want to to be able to do that, you I yeah. guess you have to pick up like free and you know Photobash and. Yeah, do you work in 3D a lot these days? Uh, yeah, like more and more. I try to to yeah to get more like, into it. I was using it maybe more in a, you know just as a layout space, mm -hmm. something pretty quick and just hey, I'm gonna paint over. But I'm trying to push more now with the 3D. Yeah, just because I see it's yeah like you have to you know you cannot just escape with just the basic layout of cubes and a basic shape and paint on it. Just being able to light texture design like more precisely in 3d is uh, important yeah do you find it like do you find this m diminishing points where it's like man I'm, I'm pouring in hours and there's like no extra quality coming out of this anymore i find on it what? a lot like on 3d yeah oh uh, yeah it's kind of annoying it's like you're, you're trying to put like let's let's work in some cool textures and you know let's let's try this shader let's try this and that and then like you end up spending hours on end and it's just like well it's not working <laughs> yeah yeah Why? sometimes i spend hours and i just replaced almost everything at the end <laughs> I, uh, okay yeah okay i spent some time on free and you don't see it anymore but that just gave me like an awesome base to start with yeah with good information so that also helps and it's just fun like, i just love to you know, experiment in 3D as well now, more and more, just trying different stuff. Yeah, yeah. 3D is fun. You, what are you, what are you using now? Are you using like with Max or with Blender? Uh, uh, I follow the trend and I switch to Blender. Damn. Yeah. Amazon? I was using yeah Maya before, then I switched to Moto, but mm -hmm. Moto was yeah, a bit, you know, getting slow and just. <laughs> That's super. Oh, no, you're saying Moto huh? was getting slow? Yeah. No. <laughs> that no, just Moto has some... Dude, I'm so bummed because like I would love to use I I've started 3D with Moto, you know? That was my yeah. uh weapon of choice almost. But it's just like it became unusable on like yeah. the higher end, you know? Uh, yeah, like exactly. The functions, yeah. you know that function where you can uh volume select like vertices and and uh you know like polygons and then you like based on volume you can make all the deformations uh i don't remember i that. can't remember yeah. exactly what it was called but yeah. you say like you let's say you would create like a a volume select sphere and based on where the sphere is located you know how it's clipping the object it would only affect you know the polygons or the vertices within the volume of that sphere and you could set up oh, like a fall off okay. So let's say you wanted to have, uh, and you could actually set up an image where it would, based on the image, it would deform, and you could like scale, rotate, move, extrude based on the volume. And I was like one of the features when I left and, and stopped using Moto, that was one of the main features that I was like really missing. Okay, so um, let me go back to Moto because <laughs> I think no, I don't know I don't about think, that. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I wonder if it's still worth. I know Cinema 4D. Is, has just added that in their new release and it almost makes me want to switch because I like Cinema 4D like I really like it um, and for yeah, a yeah. lot of things it's like even better the only th the only thing that kind of keeps me with 3ds Max is V-Ray obviously yeah. and uh, and the modifier stack the modifier stack is so powerful but then it's it's exactly same what Cinema 4D has you know yeah um, and then you, I guess you have V-Ray for Cinema 4D, so maybe I should switch. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Yeah. But what about Blender though? Like, it's yeah, I like it. It's fun. I picked up like pretty like quickly. You just get used to it at least inside, mm -hmm. and it. Yeah, I guess it's it's fun to use. I just find 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 it like pretty pretty how long cool to you, use. How long you think it took took you to? Um, to like really pick it up to a degree where like okay yeah I'm I'm making a lot of progress on this. Like a bit like after two weeks it was okay. kind of you know like okay and I was okay I'm not gonna open model to do something I'm just gonna do it inside Blender and it just I just got more and more comfortable with uh, gotcha with it. 
And yeah. it just have like yeah, a lot of stuff like the, the modifier stacker. It's inside as well, so that's just super cool. You can go back to your modifier, just change everything. And it's pretty stable and fast, so mm. and it's free. So I know. <laughs> it was also a good point. And good. they make it yeah, they develop a lot for it, so you know, maybe maybe I'll pick it up, but I'm 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 torn because I really I really like what Cinema 4D is doing these days as well. Yeah, I kind of hesitated with uh, Cinema 4D when I I wanted to switch from model, but yeah, I I, I, I don't know. I it's guess like because for animation and more graph, that that shit is just uh, impeccable, dude. Like the oh, yeah. the amount of stuff, like how quickly and easily you can do like animated, like you can animate some features and and make it look really freaking awesome. You know, let's say if you're doing a character that, and then some some work with uh, Marvel's designer, and you want to have some, you know, um, maybe like a texture animation on top of that, like weird stuff. It's so it's so easy to make it happen, and like any kind of UI, MoGraph stuff, it's just like it's just a few clicks away. It makes it it makes it like it, like wow, like setting up stuff stuff like that and say 3ds Max just takes forever. Um, yeah, it's just a few clicks away in that software. Yeah. I don't know how it is in Blender. I know Blender is pretty powerful, especially with plugins, but then, like, you need plugins. <laughs> yeah, you need plugins. That's yeah. what drives me crazy with 3ds Max, too. It's like, you need plugins, you know? Yeah. Without plugins, it's still very powerful, but then you still need plugins for, like, other things. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, I do think it, yeah, it's free from the start, so the plugins are, are not that that expensive. Most of them, so that's you know make it for for the for Blender. Yeah, but it just I'm not that far into it. I'm just maybe using like basic stuff, and I want to go maybe more into detail. But it's uh, yeah, so far so good. So yeah, that's a good question. Do you think uh, it's possible to spread yourself too thin? Do you think uh, studying too many different areas can be bad? I know the one pixel brush skill set is pretty specific. Like the, I guess in like in terms of what you're doing, you know, like what are you focusing only on, on let's say environment specifically, or you, you you're more like generalist generalist almost like I, I guess this, more, this, this, yeah this. more environments. I like to put like you know characters just for the storytelling part because mm -hmm. I like to do that. But yeah, ma mainly uh, environments. So That's... you don't you don't you don't feel that drive or need to like hey let me try character design or maybe animation and stuff like that. Uh, no, <laughs> like I would say I want to try different stuff now, and mm -hmm. especially when I do like personal work, just because I don't want like I feel I don't want to end up doing the same work as do. As I do, like I don't know for the rest of us, as my personal work. So I want to experiment to do different yeah. stuff now. I think so it doesn't get like all over the same stuff that I'm doing. Mm. Just try different style, different different approach as well. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I find it difficult for myself specifically. You know, I guess this, this question is pretty good <laughs> for me because, yeah, you find yourself spread spread real thin. Uh, yeah. and it's really hard to keep up if you want to like keep the same level uh, on everything I, I think the biggest the biggest thing is uh the reality is you're going to be hired for the work you're presenting you know and so if your work style is changing then your clientele is going to change a lot as well so i get like the the requests for the work i'm doing now it's it's becoming more weird and 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 you know all over the place uh, than it used to be, you know, when I had more mostly environment portfolio, it's kind of it's kind of interesting. It's it's really cool at one point because you get you get to experiment with different projects, but I think the downside of it is like you never know what's gonna happen and you never know when it's gonna happen, you know? Yeah. Because exactly. you're not focused yeah. on one thing. You you are sort of like you're spreading your wings and you're allowing more things come your way, but also means that uh, it's it's becoming more random as well. You know, you might uh, I find. I find that I, I might have a week or two or, or, or a couple of months where I'm getting so much work. It's, it's, it's insane. Like I, I can only, I'm just saying no to 90% of the things. And then once I finish that project that I was working on or a few projects that I was working on, I end up just like, okay, like I said no to everyone. What now? 
<laughs> you know uh so you, you might find yourself in the predicament like that um if you know if you if you actually get a lot uh requests um but yeah if, if to give i, I don't want to give any advice I, I don't think we should give any advice whether you should you know do one specific thing or oh yeah yeah because yeah. everyone is so different yeah uh, exactly yeah the way you think and yeah. what you like you know you should do what you think you, f you think is going you to feel be yeah you feel you want to do and yeah exactly i was one advice i would give to everyone uh not, not just work hard but like if you have to be really obsessed about what you're doing you know because yeah. then, then it's almost always going to be a positive outcome uh let's see let's maybe get uh like one or two more questions and we'll wrap it up uh do 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 let's see uh do you think concept artists will eventually become 3d modelers in the near future uh you're gonna have to know modeling but thinking that 3d modelers i don't i don't know if it's because modeling like Especially like when you do it like for production, it has to be like pretty precise, right? So for animation and all of that. And I know I tend sometimes to do stuff a bit dirty, so I'm not sure we like it's gonna merge like modeling and concept art to one thing. Yeah, I f I think it's far away from where we are just yeah. gonna be doing 3D modeling, just yeah. 3D modeling. Then like, like pick up your 3D to make it like for the production, but. Yeah. It's not going to be like just one one job and that's it. Yeah, l definitely learn 3D. Like don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like, get get on it right now. Don't wait because it's it's moving there and it's moving all the time. It started moving like years ago. And now like it's easy to pick up and you sh and there's no excuse to not Yeah, it. now there is no excuse. Yeah. Just um, um, everything online. Do do you want to hear a question from Aton? I'm not sure. I don't what know. is it? It's kind of a weird question. Uh, it's, 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 it's actually pretty weird. Is there some sexual context to it? <laughs> uh, how would you suggest getting better at color and lighting? Uh, I guess for me it was like more like observation. More than I didn't do that much study, but I guess it's better if you do study like I think like Ethan do, you know, like just plein air and painting study, but. I kind of like to observe as well, even take like photography and stuff like that, just to get my eyes not trained, but just used to color and light. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I guess, yeah, on my part, it's more like the observation, you know, how things work, how light is working and color are interacting like between each other. Mm -hmm. Do you travel? Because I never did. Uh, yeah. We try to like with my girlfriend to travel in uh, mm. different places, mainly in nature, because that's what we yeah. love the best, the more. So I guess that's why I'm always painting rocks, right? Do you go like back country a lot, like like yeah. really deep, in, deep into the wild? Yeah, yeah, we try. Like uh, we have like all the gear to do that, so as much as uh, as we can, yeah. Yeah, I'll be scared shitless to do that with like wolves and freaking bears. Uh, no, man, I'm fucking stuck. We, we do it in there and I'm always scared about the bears. She's not, but I'm like, yeah, maybe there is a bear or Dude, something. Bears will fuck you up, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah. Want to fuck with them. I saw too many things, you know, just start up. No bears, please. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, um, I think it was Nick uh, telling me that story where he was in Yosemite and, uh, and he was like painting the waterfall. And then he looks up and there is a bear sitting like on the other side of the waterfall. And the water is like really shallow. Yeah. And it's like, oh shit. <laughs> Pack. Moved out slowly. Yeah. And never Dang. looked back. But dude, like those fuckers, they, they run like 40 miles an hour. Yeah, you cannot. You cannot just, outrun them. Yeah. You think you can, but you will not. No, you will no. Die. They'll, 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 they'll mess up, mess you up, dude. I saw this video on uh on youtube where a guy had like a gopro and it like he was uh, on the bike oh yeah and, like the it's... bear started like running from the side on him <laughs> and the yeah, just eh, no, no, not for me. Yeah. and then like yeah he just like oh my fucking god like started started like pedaling real hard uh but they added like this music 
this like funny music to it 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 made it like almost even more bizarre yeah dude he ended up like abandoning bike and running and hiding in like trees you know and then you see like confused bear like look, looking around it was fucking scary and he was like pedaling real hard and the bear was catching out it was so crazy it's like yeah you cannot outrun those fuckers <laughs> yeah it makes me yeah. scared dude yeah yeah grizzly bear mainly like i think over there it's brown or black bear in a in a in quebec so yeah. It, 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 yeah like they said they're, they're more like calm and everything but still it's a fucking bear so yeah yeah, I, I think I listen to Joe Rogan too much as well. Like when he talks about bears, it just makes me even more scared because he gets he he gets like uh you know he hunts them too, and oh, yeah. so he knows he knows a lot about bears. You know, um, so the descriptions he sometimes gives in terms of like the way they look at you, especially like the brown bear, like the way they look at you, and they're all around, dude. Like in California, there's so many wild yeah. animals. Like if you live in uh in more obscure areas you're gonna have coyotes you're gonna have mountain lions you know you have to be really careful with that stuff like i would never go hiking with like a headphones on you know that would be yeah. like a really bad idea um yeah it's kind of crazy i saw this video also like there's this guy walking on the alley like in the alleyway in pasadena and there's like bl black bird that's walking around the corner and they all all like they're like literally scare one another like just going from behind the corners and so bear runs away and the guy runs away <laughs> funny to look at the guy was Oops, lucky yeah. <laughs> he was lucky yeah <laughs> uh anyways dude we could go we could, we could make a totally different podcast from that uh let's get podcast one more question yeah let's get one more question and wrap it up i would love to have you back though like maybe uh maybe we should pick up like time somewhere uh you know later this year and just have a little oh, more sure, time. man, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, maybe get, like, more topics to discuss. Uh, maybe get absolutely. Eitan to talk to. Um, um, a mixed art cafe with... <laughs> maybe you could, you, could, you, you could have, like, Shadi making a fire or something. Just to bring that up again. Drinks. Yeah. I'm going to read the last question. I'm sorry if I, if I skipped over um, some of your question, guys, but that will be the last one. How do you bring a lot of things to the table without creating too much of an expectation for the client from the client uh, that's a good one i think it's like not, you, not over hyping the client but yet showing enough you know what i mean uh not sure um it's like I, I, I spoke about this uh, on one of my podcasts. Uh, I think I was talking with Aton about this, but you know, there's there's often times when you get to, like new project with the client, and you're super excited to work on it, and then you like add over time, and you know you work your ass off just to get that first delivery. Yeah. And so that's that's obviously a bad idea, um, but like how where do you find the boundary of delivering enough for clients to be really happy with that first delivery but not over hyping and not over <coughs> over extending so that all of a sudden you're putting yourself in a way where you have to work like way way too much and keep up that that quality to make them happy man i think i'm, I'm trying to over hype them every time i do something <laughs> especially because like uh, i think uh walking for the dog is just my my first you know work as a concept artist so mm -hmm. like I, I couldn't tell with other clients but just with no regard and just just trying to not do too much but just yeah. trying to keep that you know that what like that level coming that what we do so yeah i'll say one thing uh then if you if you wanna i i'll put it this way don't overwork yourself in a way where it's like you cannot keep it up forever. Just uh, just try to do what you think is good for day one or, you know, for whatever. whatever. If you would work on the personal work and you had a time limit, just do that. You know, you're excited about yeah. the project mm -hmm. and you work on it. And this is, a, this is pretty much the amount of time you would spend working for yourself otherwise. But you know, like okay, at this at this time of a day, 
or you know the time the day ends i have to go and you know pick up kids from from school at oh, 8 PM. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. you know uh turn off computer because there's going to be a massive power outage mm -hmm. you know that kind of stuff um just like so you have a boundary you're not spending 16 hours in day one and delivering like five images and then obviously you cannot keep it up and then like yeah. after a few days the clients ask you like what the hell like you've been delivering so many images and then now what's going on but then also don't try this this trick where it's um it's like i just gonna do enough that i think should be enough and maybe spend a few hours and i'm done because that might not work out well. Yeah. You know, I've tried, I, I think I had, I don't, I think I've already had a project where it backfired on me, you know, oh, yeah. where I just like, I think this is going to be enough and sort of like half-assed it. Uh, and it's just a stupid idea. Don't do that. Um, because you never know who's, who, who's the other person working on the project. And you sort of like, if you're not under delivering, and the other people exactly. working on the project are over delivering, then you're in the in the wrong spot, you know? Yeah. It's kinda weird. Um you know, working when you work with people, yeah, I've, I've most pe most 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 of the artists that they want to deliver like the, the best shit they can and and try their best. And I, I don't think there's that many that over deliver, honestly. Um But yeah. Yeah, I would say that's a good, that would be a good advice. You know, just keep it keep it right in the middle. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, I never time. like I never overworked. You know, the the days like I don't like to spend like sixteen hours just on um yeah like work stuff. I mean, professional work. Yeah. I just don't want to kill myself, so try to spend eight to nine, but just just to keep like that. Yeah, like I think a, a good fresh advice rate is... of the on the project. Yeah, I agree. I think a good advice would also be like do what do you get paid for? And yeah. then if you feel that the quality of the delivery you're giving is not good enough, then add some extra time to make it better. Yeah. Yeah. But do it occasionally. Don't do it all the time. Yeah, exactly. Because th then yeah. that becomes an expectation that you always work over yeah. time and you're always over delivering, you know? You, you want to respect your time as well. You know, you're not... The, usually when you're working on a project, you're you're making a profit for that person as well. So, yeah. and obviously, you know, the, the better, the better stuff you deliver, the, you know, the more chances you're going to have to get hired again. And, you know, the more chances the client's going to be happy, all, all that kind of stuff. But then there's also a chance where you can over deliver and that creates an expectation. And once you break that expectation, that's worse than, you know, than not delivering, not, than, yeah. than not over delivering. And then just staying yeah. in that realm of, of keeping making sure that what you're doing is good and then sometimes doing it better, you know? Yeah. So, but I guess like on last of us right now, it feels so different because some guys like one pixel brush been working on it like for more than almost two years. So it almost like we're not freelancing anymore. Yeah. We're just cause we're doing so much for like, yeah, two years or something. It just feel like different than just freelancing for them now. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. All right, dude. Let's wrap it up here. Um, I hope my I hope my voice wasn't breaking up too much. I'm still I'm still sick a little bit. I'm getting better though. Having kids, man, they they bring germs. <laughs> they bring germs and then make you sick. They don't get sick. They just make you sick. <laughs> um, I've been sick more times past few years than ever before. Oh yeah. <laughs> because of the kids, you know. Germs. They hang out like with other kids and. You know, they yeah, bring germs and, they and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Just... And like, it's a perfectly, it's a perfect weather. It's, it's, it's constant weather. Everything is fine. I sit at home. Don't, don't go out and talk to anyone. I don't touch things. And then I get sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a life, but it is what it is. Um, I'm getting better though. It's good. It's good. All right, Great. guys, let's wrap it up here. Thanks, Florian. Uh, Florian, what am I saying? Florent. Um, yeah. Thanks again for having me, man. That was yeah, great. Fun. Let's let's make it let's make it happen again. Uh, sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll sync up exactly when and what. Um, uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Uh, All right. And for everyone who joined the stream and uh, the podcast, thanks guys. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. You know what to do if you love it. Freaking 
subscribe to this channel and press like or whatever you whatever, whatever oh, I'm you gonna subs- do. yeah i'm gonna subscribe now subscribe real hard uh yeah youtube changed the the policy where like you, you can subscribe but you're not gonna get notifications so there's like this bell button you have to press in order to actually get notification when when the when there's a new video yeah. or if it goes live so it's kind of messed up because like why you're subscribing then you know yeah two clicks for one thing yeah okay. it's okay. Uh, i made it available like usually when i when i stop streaming i make it available also on like other platforms so you can listen to it uh, on itunes and stitcher and soundcloud so you know that's also like if you're on the go and you want to just listen and it's uh, available there as well uh cool all right let's wrap it up next week i'm gonna have uh gmonk so that's gonna be fun too and uh yeah thanks guys for joining and uh, i'll see you next time thank you bye peace